cheers to the weekend. I hope that everybody is just, uh, you know, it's Friday. We are in a Father's Day weekend, so it's super exciting. And of course, when we're here during a Father's Day weekend, happy Father's Day. Cheers to all the fathers out there. I hope that you guys are relaxing and having a good time and, and doing some fun things. So of course, um, when we're talking about Father's Day, we kind of think of ties, right? And so I had to bring back my good friend, John Clayton. Um, when it comes to ties, he is like the number one when it comes to ties. So welcome back, John. How are you? I'm doing well. You have, am I awesome. coming through loud and clear? You are. I can hear you great. great. Thank you. Good. Cheers Good. and happy Father's Day. So before we start, Cheers. before we get into like all of the whole, um, what are you drinking? San Pellegrino. San Just Pellegrino. got back from the golf course. <laughs> oh my gosh. So he's already been drinking all day. <laughs> so no, no, no. yeah, exactly. What, what? So before we get into all of that, I want to go ahead and say happy Father's Day to John. And I want to, um, okay. you got to tell everybody all about your daughters and then um, your whole fatherhood before we get started with tying ties. Gotcha. Will do. Okay, so tell us, tell us, tell us. All right, so uh, I am a father. Um, I'm a father of three daughters. Um, their ages are 31, 20, that would be 28 and 25. Um, three years apart. Um, I'm also a grandfather. Um, so that makes it awesome also. Um, yes. To, to, the, to the older one, she has two sons. And so I had all girls and now I have uh, two boys as grandsons and that really changes things a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, uh, Lynette and I have uh, been, you know, we've been doing our thing, trying to be good parents and failing miserably. Um, no, <laughs> and then uh, trying to be good grandparents, and, and it's a whole different world. Uh, but uh, love, love my kids. Uh, been thankful to to have the three girls, and thankful that we still have good relationships. So tell us, um, tell us how how is it to be a dad of three girls, and then have Lynette? So you've got four women in the house. Tell us how it is to yep. to be um, the only man in the house. <laughs> so having four women in the house is uh and we also had a girl dog for the longest time too um so you know i grew up so i have two sisters uh both mm -hmm. older than me mm -hmm. and so I, I grew up around girls and so it was just it was normal so it's actually more alien for me <laughs> to be around uh boy children than it is girl children because i've always mm -hmm. just been around so, uh, so yeah it's uh it was good obviously there's some um there's some challenges right with, with a bunch of household of females um but uh but it was good so i'm thankful for for that and uh we've had uh, we've had a, a good life together and, and have fun so you know given that we've had all girls a lot of a lot of my <laughs> tendencies um have led towards you know jane austen movies and things like that and so you know, some of my love for, for ties and dress may have stemmed from that. So having the girls has probably helped. Awesome. I love, so they keep you well dressed then. Ah, they, they, <laughs> they, they, they push me, right? They push me. Awesome. Well, go ahead and let's get started in um, the different. So you're doing three different ties today or? I am. Mm -hmm. I am. I'm doing okay. three different ties. So so I started off, um, I, I put this in, but I'm not going to show you how to tie this one because it's just, it's really simple. It's actually just a half knot and you flip mm -hmm. it over this. So this is a uh, commonly called an asket okay. or some people call it a cravat, but I always look at a cravat as something a little bit more um, like the uh, 1800s version of the cravat where you wrap it around and etc. cetera. Um, and so the one link that I sent you was a, of the different styles of cravat that they have. Um, but before we go to that, I, I wanna talk about kind of my, um, my motivation behind tying um, and, and having interesting ties. Um, number one, I'm, I'm a, I like to be unique. I like to stand out. Um, it's just always kind of been the way I love. I have been uh, through school and 
So the tie allows that because if you look around, you go to your average IT conference, right? Everybody is either not wearing a tie or if they are, they're just wearing a normal tie mat. And so why be normal? Um, I think I used to have a pin on my jean jacket in high school that said, why be normal? Um, agreed, agreed. <laughs> so uh, so when I found uh, di tie in different knots, it, it provided that. And so one, one quick story. So I, I was in Alabama and I was already starting to tie tie knots and I was becoming known for that. And I move up to the DC area and I go to a conference and somebody from across the room says, hey, you're the tie guy. So, you know, it, it's kind of become my moniker. So that's worked out quite well. Um, and then it's, and, and then, then you, another, get the you get you get the dapper title. Correct, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take a dapper title. I love um, it. And so then there's another story. So the, the, the story of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Um, it, it, it's a it's an older um, older older book. Uh, the Scarlet Pimpernel was an Englishman trying to save the French from being the French royalty from being beheaded during the Revolution. Um, and so, but he was a dandy and and liked to you know be well dressed. Well, back in back in that day, and I don't know if you've got that one picture that I, that I sent you. Um, tying the cravat was a very important thing. Um, and, and the cravat was tied in so many different ways. There was tons of different knots to tie um, for a cravat. Some of them just varied a little bit in even just the, the way it was folded as it was wrapped around and they were starched. And so it was a big thing to be able to do, um, to do your cravat. Do you have that picture? So I did have that picture, but I was not able to input it in, unfortunately. It. Yes. Cool. Yeah, unfortunately. But cool. I know that that's like one of the the status ties, right? That's right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the cravat, you know, when they're wearing all the high collars and they would wrap mm -hmm. the silk around and, and tie it in very certain ways. So mm -hmm. there's a story that goes along with that. Um, so you've got um, Sir Percy. He's the Scarlet Pimpernel. Um, but... Sir Percy is his proper name. Um, so he's having a discussion uh, with uh, Monsieur Chauvelin, who's the French uh, police, and trying to run down who is this Scarlet Pimpernel. Um, and uh, he comes to this party, and, and the Pimpernel or, or uh, Percy and uh, Chauvelin are having a discussion. Well, um, Percy accidentally spills some wine on Chauvelin's cravat. And so he says, uh, he says, sir, my most abject and humble apologies. I've completely drowned your cravat. How could I possibly make amends for such clumsiness? And then Chauvelin says, it's of no consequence. It's only a cravat. And then this is the quote from Percy, which is fantastic. He says, only a cravat. Oh, that's my awesome. dear sir. Yeah, the cravat that's awesome. <laughs> is the apotheosis of all neckwear. The cravat distinguishes a man of refinement from the merely ordinary. It sneers at the severity of the stock. It's only one item of dress that expresses the true individuality. And whether it be made of lace, silk, or the finest lawn, it thrives on ingenuity and originality, above all, on personality, down to the last skilled twist of bow or knot. So that's kind of my motivation around uh, why I do ties in the first place and, and make it fun because it's a little bit of ingenuity. It's ingenuity, it's fun, it's status, it's, it's again, it's things that most people aren't doing because I know I can't and I was hoping to have like a tie that I could, uh, I could go along with you for, <laughs> but being my circumstances that I'm outdoors right now and I'm mobile, can't so I wasn't able to, no, I can't quite do it, unfortunately. But um, most people can't even tie a regular tie, much right. less a cravat or something of that nature. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So this, uh, this is a, uh, an asket. And so an asket is, it's a, it's a shorter tie and it's also really fat on the outside. Um, and so this was actually something my daughter gave me for what Christmas birthday, father's day, maybe. Um, so, um, so with this, there's a couple of different ways you can, you know, wear it the way I did when I was starting with an open collar and just wrapped clean around your neck and flowing over, kind of filling the void so you don't have your hairy chest sticking all out. Um, <laughs> or you can, you can do something a little bit nicer and wear it with, uh, wear it with just a, a normal uh, shirt. So uh, pretty simple. This is a barrel knot.
see if I can get this going. Good. Like that. And then I got that. So since it ends up really short, the trick to this one is getting it pinned up. And so there's a couple of different ways. I've got um, this one came with a, a little ring that you can slip over the knot to tie it up. Or you can also pin it, which is a pretty common way to do it. Um, of course, wearing it, I've, that's why I have my... Uh, that's why I have my vest on. Watching the backward image is fun. Um, because it ends up so short, tuck that inside your vest, and then you've got a pretty unique uh, little type, type of tie. Works well um, with a vest, um, which of course a, uh, a Regency gentleman would always have a vest. And so that's why that works well. Pretty simple, you could also use a, um, a tie tack. Uh, nice pearl, always works nice with that one. Um, so that that's a way to, to kind of take that that cravat or that uh, asket and make it more more formal instead of just being a, a simple uh, simple uh, asket. All right. So the next one I'm going to do is uh, probably one of one of the harder knots um, to do. And so this is obviously just a normal tie, kind of. You know, you got your fat end, you've got your thin end. And the secret behind all these different tie knots is that, you know, with a normal tie knot, you, you get your you get your short end, your skinny end posted, you do your little tie, bloody bloody bloody, but you finish with the, the fat end being all wrapped around and on top. Well, with with these different type of tie knots, the secret is you're actually starting with the short end. And you're doing all the tying with the short end. So you post the fat end where you want it to end up, right at your belt or whatever, and then you start doing the work. So it makes it, I'm actually okay. It makes it pretty fun to, to do some funner things. So this first knot that I'm doing is called the mosaic. It, it's a pretty complicated knot. Um, it, it looks really, um, really fun. Uh, and I won't run through all of this, all of the steps trying to verbally, but I'll just tie it and you can see how it's done when I go. Uh, tied it three or four times uh, yesterday and to make sure I'm ready. So I think I am ready uh, to run through this one. You're always ready. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so far, so good. Let me see. Maybe I do need your mirror, Lynette. That'll be good. Yep. There we go. So with this uh, with this knot, part of the, the reason why it ends up doing the way it does is you can see I actually folded the skinny half um, in half so that you get a little bit tighter knot. Um, so this is kind of fun. It's just a matter of uh, wrapping it and uh, and going through uh, the different the different areas of the of the uh, of the knot and it ends up creating a pretty, uh, pretty fun knot in the end. Lots of up and through and over and uh, working really hard to keep the, keep the uh, tie end done. And then it kind of looks bizarre as you're going through this. It's like, wait, this is gonna look like heck. And then you always have some time to adjust it at the very end. So for any female out there that's done any type of braids, that's kind of what this looks like, or at least that's yeah. what it's looking like to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's some pretty, pretty complex uh, braiding going on there. Too high. Oh, too high? Right there. Okay. Lynette uh, is my assistant tonight, and she is uh, running, um, she is running the, uh, the mirror for me. All right, so getting this one all taken care of, tightening it up. And then so you can see, 
when you're when you're done, you've got a really complicated uh, twisty knot. This is all that's left of the knot, and your fat end ends up right at your belly button. So you tuck this little portion behind your collar, flip your collar down, and with uh, with the two ties that I'm tying, the knots that I'm tying today, they both uh, uh, they both don't need a vest. Um, but of course they look good with the vest as well because that really highlights the tie. And so this one it is called, yes, I'm doing, I'm backwards, right? Um, this one is called the, uh, the mosaic knot. And, and the guy that I follow on this one, um, I sent you his name, um, Sumo in the text. I need to come back so I can make sure I, I get his name correctly. His, his website is called, or his YouTube channel is called Who Sees This? Um, it, but his name is Linwood Darkus. Um, and uh, Who Sees This is his site. And so he does tons of different tie knots uh, on his site, which, which are really fun, uh, really fun to work with. And so, you know, these, these are fun. They hold really well. Um, you can do other things with them. And of course, you would just adjust it. The one thing that you don't have um with knots like these is like your typical windsor knot when you're done you just pull it out and poof it all comes apart this one has to be taken apart piece by piece the same way that it was put together and so that that becomes a bit of a challenge so let me take this one down and then we'll go on to the next knot so mosaic knot so it is i mean so this is the the men's fashion so i i, I don't feel bad anymore at all for being a woman and having to deal with the things that we have to deal with being a woman right. because you know what you guys are dealing with a whole lot more when you're dealing with these ties holy smokes <laughs> right especially so I will when say you that. choose to do this now i, I do yep. cause my own pain right yeah um but after a while when you're tying them uh it just becomes a little bit second nature so it, you know you learn them you know the ones that you like i probably have half a dozen and now I can't even find where I'm supposed to get out of this thing. Look at that. Here you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> I can do it. You hold on. Dads can oh. fix everything, remember? Because this is a Father's Day special. So dads can fix everything. Dad, can everything. you fix this? Yes. Yes. Right. yes. <laughs> All right. There, I'm free. I'm there free you go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So that was the mosaic knot. Obviously a little bit more complicated than your typical Windsor. Um, yes. But fun, unique. You don't yes. see too many of those mm -hmm. running around. Um, right. I actually, um, so when I first started learning knots about this, I was reading a blog uh, about this and one, one guy commented on there, these are so unprofessional. I'm like, why is it unprofessional? I don't get it. I mean, I'm taking the time to make sure that my knot is unique and fun and um, it looks good in a suit. But I was like, okay, whatever. I got a, I got a job. I, I wore one of those mosaics to an interview one time. I got the job. So couldn't have been all that bad. <laughs> no, it was fantastic. And you scored points for being unique. So boom, done. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> done. All right. So, uh, so the next knot I'm going to tie, uh, tie by the same guy, Linwood, um, is called the geisha knot. And, um, you know, when he comes up with these ideas, he just comes up with them and, and then he says, okay, what do I call this? Um, and a lot of, a lot of the people on his YouTube channel, will tell him, hey, call it this because it kind of looks like that. Um, so this one kind of starts off like a normal, um, what's it called, four in hand knot. Um, just to, you, see the, uh, you see the royalty wear in this one. I actually don't like this knot for, for a normal tie knot um, because it's, it's just too, um, too simple. So, but this is your typical knot, it's imbalanced uh, and that's why I don't like it. I like a Windsor personal if I'm gonna wear a regular uh, a, a regular tie and that's perfect. And so the, the geisha knot is kind of fun. Um, it, uh, it has some, uh, some unique characteristics to it. This one does actually work better if I, if I keep it folded the whole way through. So let me get that one folded. And I, uh, I, put, I did this one, uh, Sumoya Alamo Ace one year. 
If you did, then we probably took a picture of it together because I'm always like, right. hey, we need to take a photo. <laughs> we do. So, we do. Yes, always. And then this year right. as well. So I'm expecting like you to be over the top for <laughs> this year's Alamo Ace. Okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> All right, so pull this guy through like that. Keeping some of these folded becomes a, a bit of a challenge sometimes. And then up through the, the, the very top here, there's the, there's my finger through. This one is a, a bit of a, uh, a tight, uh, tight fit, if you will. So, but I think I'm in pretty good shape with that right there. <laughs> Lynette can't see me what I'm seeing. And so she's doing her best to kind of keep it there. Uh, and then this also has a really fun little pocket in the back to tuck the rest of it down. If I can find the said pocket in the back. There's said pocket. This one finishes off really fun. So this one, the back of the tie, uh, the little end of the tie uh, just stays right there. So then you make your last little bit of adjustments and get it tweaked up. Just so. And so, uh, voila. And if you wanted to, you could put a little uh, pearl pin on top if you wanted to, especially if you want to do a, um, you wanted to do a vest. And so there, the geisha knot. And I think he calls it the geisha knot because of the, the round areas right here. So, uh, so that's why we have it. So what do you think? Pretty cool. You can it's see some very, details on that one. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. So ge geisha not probably because of how like the hair is done. That it reminds me of the hair. Right. Exactly. Like, that's kind of his thought. Together. Yeah. Yeah. The rounded, the big curls mm -hmm. on the hair. Yeah, for sure. It, you know, it's kind of fun. Uh, some, some of the knots that you tie are, are not very stable <laughs> and you have to baby them. Uh, mm -hmm. but some of them like this one is actually quite stable. And so it's kind of That's fun. Good. Here's, here's what you got left for the little end. Mm -hmm. Kind of tuck that inside your shirt if you need to, to get it around, but boom, voila. Yeah. So if you're ever wondering why they had ties are so long, there you go. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. And, and this one, I think it, it is an extra long tie or maybe mm -hmm. not, maybe it's just a regular size tie. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, some people look at, look at my knots and they're like, Oh wow, that must be a really long tie. Like, no, nah, it's actually not. It's just a it's normal. It's a normal. Tie. Yeah, it's a normal. Yeah. So, so Connie's watching right now, and Connie said, "Looking forward Hi, to Connie. seeing us both at Ace." So, you've got to up your tie game when it comes to Ace too. So, in November, know, right? we all expect to see something totally different than what we're seeing here. <laughs> well, I got a few. So, so here's the deal: um, COVID, right? How long yes. has it been since I've worn a tie? I don't think a I've long worn time? a tie all the way through COVID at all. So, um, so this, this is the, I wearing it yesterday was the first tie tying that I've done mm -hmm. in probably a year and a half. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, I know. And playing like playing dress up has been hard too. Uh Oh, I think right? we froze. Okay. Yeah. So it right playing dress up has been like, um, it's just COVID has, has changed things. And so it's, it has been one of those, Hey, I forgot. Do I remember how to tie a tie? Do you remember what I'm supposed right? to be wearing for these? you know, different meetings and different things right. that we normally do when it wasn't COVID and we were actually out and about and like seeing each other and stuff. So and doing yeah. stuff, right? Going yeah. and visiting and talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for good sure. Stuff. For good sure. Stuff. Yep. So those are the three ties. So it was the the ask Ascar? The, the Asket and I tied the, the barrel asket. knot. The Asket barrel knot. We had the mosaic mm -hmm. knot and then the geisha mm -hmm. knot. So yep, if you want more it. information on tying ties and the different knots, um, then we can probably add the two folks that um, you get your inspiration from on this feed, which are, Correct. Um, there were two guys, right? Who sees this? And that's uh, Linwood Darkus. 
but his, okay. his a YouTube site is called Who Sees This? Okay. And then the other guy I look at is Patrick Novotny, and it's okay. N-O-V-O-T-N-Y. Uh, Perfect. And so he, they, they all have tons of different, and sometimes they share back and forth with each other. Like, I know on one of the knots, uh, Patrick gives a shout out to Linwood because he created the knot. Um, Sweet. So Linwood, the, the things I like about his is he actually of his own, um, where uh, Novotny's to... Uh, do other ones. I know he does some of his own as well. But okay, it's fun. Awesome. Once you learn the, the technique, mm -hmm. it's kind of easy to kind of come up with your own ideas. Sweet. I love it. Yeah. So we're expecting some new and fun, funky tie knots uh, for November's Alamo Ace for sure. And then um, yes. for folks that um, are looking for that inspiration, we're going to go ahead and add those sites to the feed after, after we're done with here. But um, I hope yeah. that you have like a so you, you spent a lot of time on the golf course, but I hope you have an amazing Father's Day weekend. And again, thank I you. thank you so much for being on. Um, you're going to be our repeat offender me. because you and Lynette, we love you guys and we miss you so much. You already know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So no, cheers I, to I you both. I wish it would work out to where we're, we were both here, but that, that's what you got. Lynette's here with me helping out. Mm -hmm. So cheers to you, Lynette. It's almost, yes. no, it is cocktail time. We just have to have dinner first. Sometimes, because sometimes the cocktail is dinner. Mm. <laughs> there you go. It depends on what kind of Friday you guys have been having. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hear you. I hear you. It just depends. But thank you guys so much. And then for all the dads out there, again, um, you know, happy Father's Day to everybody. Um, you know, dads are such an inspiration to us little girls. So happy Father's Day to all you guys out there that are dads. And we appreciate everything that you're doing. And um, for the folks that are on Facebook that haven't uh, checked out my YouTube, my YouTube is under Simoy Tovez. Uh, click the bell to get all of our latest information that's coming out and all of the new content. And uh, next week we're going to have a uh, a nice performance from a nice. very amazing veteran that's going to sing for us. So. We'll catch you guys awesome. next week, Friday. So thanks, John, and happy Father's yes, Day. Thanks, Simoy. <laughs> happy Father's Day to Juan as well. Absolutely. All right. Take care. All right. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next see Friday. You guys. Yep. <laughs> Bye.